Hello, how do I join music tracks end to end in Sirenscape? So they're infinitely loopable, but you're not cutting off the lovely ambience that you've created. Right, I'm going to record in Cubase here some piano playing with a click track. I'm gonna keep it nice and tight and it's just going to be four bars long. Ready? Two, three. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to duplicate this twice. Okay, I'm going to do another one. Again and do another one. Okay, so they should all be beautifully in time with each other. Good, so then now they should be able to, in Cubase, be able to loop from there to there, theoretically. Sounds good. Now, you might think to create this loop music, you would create files that are from there to there. But if I do that, listen to all the tail of the reverb that's going to be cut off. Everything you hear past this line would not be exported. And if you cut that reverb off, it'll sound very, very awkward. So what I want to do to make sure I catch the beginning, maybe there's a cymbal roll or some sort of little anticipation of the notes. I'm gonna take a whole two seconds before and a whole two seconds after. So I'm gonna catch any decay of that reverb. Right, I'm gonna mute and mute that. I'm just going to export these three tracks. And then we're going to look at our loops in Audition. Okay, they should all be the same length. Be a lovely idea to normalize them all. All right. So yeah, so if I were to cut off the end of this file, because we actually want to loop from here to here, right? But I'm going to be cutting off this ambience. And when it gets to the end of there, it'll sound like this. Have a listen to this. I'm going to get that as it cuts off. I need Sirenscape to keep playing this file while it starts the next file from the beginning. That's pretty good timing there on that entry. That's a little bit later. <laughs> and that's a little bit later as well. It might create a little bit of a bump. Oh yeah, I see, that's probably all right. Okay, right, so now I need to determine what my loop length is. I'm gonna take the full length of the file, and just because I happen to do the tempo at 120 beats per minute, so the maths is easy for me, that's great. The full length of the file is 12 seconds. I'm going to find out where my downbeat is, and I'm going to call, uh, I'd probably call it this and do some really complicated maths, but let's see if it works if I just do two seconds. And I need to push the stop uh, button where I'm expecting the downbeat of the next file to happen. So I'm going to listen. I'm going to get ready with my stop button. Okay, and bash that as well. There it is on that 10 seconds. So I could, I would probably do the proper, very, very specific maths that's down there, but I'm going to call that 10 seconds. So that tells me that the loop length I'm wanting is going to be 12 seconds minus the two seconds I'm going to be cutting off at the beginning minus the two seconds I'm going to be cutting off at the end, which is eight seconds. Okay, so I'm going to go save. All right, here I am in the Sirenscape Creator. I'm going to create myself an element. I'm going to call it infinite loop. Infinite loop. Okay, and I'm going to import our three samples. Drag them in there. 
there's the name of what I'm importing, Ben's Amazing Piano Playing, and then the credit there that's required. Okay, good. Let's see if this works. It takes a little while for samples to transcode on the server, particularly when things are busy in America. So if you're doing work and it's Friday night or Saturday night or Sunday night, um, then yeah, the server will be working very hard. Sometimes I like to just do a refresh of the UI if there's any confusion about what's working or not. Okay, this last sample is still grayed out. So it might take just a bit. Ah, there it is, they should be working now. Right, remember that when you import music samples, you should set them to not 3D. So we're getting that lovely, beautiful mix in full stereo. Very important. And remember the first time um, samples play, they have to be downloaded into the cache on your computer. So there can be a slight delay while the computer does that. So the timings you hear very first time are not going to be brilliant. So let's just make sure we hear all the samples first. That's sample number one. Note the big gap. And notice the two second silence at the beginning. Oh, look, see, it's spent a moment just downloading it there. That's another one of the samples. And there it is, that's sample three. Two seconds delay. And there we are. Right, so our loop amount. Sirenscape maintains timing best when it's counting the delay from the start. And our loop time we determined by doing our maths was eight seconds. And this should theoretically work. Aha. Uh -huh. sample starts playing for those two seconds silence here. One, two, there's that first little bit of the recording, while the other recording keeps playing. One, still playing, the other recording for another two seconds while it fades out. Hooray! Okay, so just in summary, you open your file, the file should all be the same length. You play along, you put a marker where the downbeat of your file is. You put a marker bump, where you want the that downbeat to land of the next file that plays. The distance between there and there, that duration, which says here is 8 seconds and 43 whatevers, but um, I, you know, that would probably be close enough just to make the math simpler. I was calling it eight seconds. That's the loop amount you set and you set the file to count delay from start. Make sense? Let's listen one more time to my glorious <laughs> piano playing. And that doesn't cut off that, um, lovely tail, which is still singing while the other one plays. That makes sense to you. Ask some questions if you need to. <laughs> it's kind of a fun game to play to get these recordings, but we do a lot of this in Sirenscape and it works really, really, really well. Um, enjoy your creations. Bye.